What's up YouTube fam? Welcome back to the second episode of Facts by Nats, a YouTube series where we get nerdy about skincare. Now, last episode was about BAJ and I will link that uh, right up here. But now today we're going to talk about the um, sister, brother, mom, dad, cousin of BAJ, which is none other than AAJ, alpha hydroxy acids. Now, I'm gonna answer a ton of questions about AAJs today. We're gonna talk about what is AAJ, do I need it in my routine, how often do I use it, and where do I put it in my routine, how long does it take until I see results, how do I adjust the rest of my routine when I add an AAJ, does it clash with any other ingredients, are there any negative side effects, and of course, some of my product recommendations. So if you want to hear about all that information and more, I would stay tuned. But first, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Natasha and I want my channels to be a space where we take an as realistic and true, but also fun approach to beauty. So if that sounds like your thing, um, I would subscribe, but that's just me personally. Anyways, I only do cruelty free beauty. So that's also good for you to know. And I also hang out a lot on Instagram and do a lot of weird stuff on stories. I try out a lot of stuff. I do a lot of weird filters. I just, there's just a lot going on on Instagram. So if I were you, I would also follow me there. Now let's get in to the video. So the first question is, what is AAJ? AAJ is a chemical exfoliant. There are physical exfoliants like scrubs, and then there are chemical exfoliants like AAJ. What happens with chemical exfoliants is when you apply them to the skin, there's a chemical reaction that happens that speeds up the cell turnover, AKA it exfoliates the topmost layer of your skin and takes away all those dead skin cells and up to the surface come the glowy, youthful, happy ones. AJs are just one type of chemical exfoliant. There is also BAJ and PAJ. AJ is a water soluble. And what the hell does that mean? In the last episode, we talked about BAJ, which is an oil soluble, and now AAJ is a water soluble. Mm -hmm. Well, let me explain. The outermost layer of your skin is built by cells and ceramides. Ceramides are basically fats. So when I say that BAJ is an oil soluble, that means that it can penetrate deeper down into the skin through those ceramides and down into the pores and unclog the sebum in that pore. AJ is a water soluble, meaning that it cannot penetrate into those deeper layers of the skin. It will instead work on the outermost layer and exfoliate that, meaning that it is a great ingredient to even out skin tone, getting rid of dullness, getting rid of those fine lines and just giving you that glow. So the reason why we call it AJs in plural is because there are so many different types of alpha hydroxy acid and they're all a little bit different so they're good at different things the most common one is glycolic acid which is the smallest molecule out of all of them meaning that it is the most effective one or if you want to call it the most harsh one you can't really say that it's the harshest though because it of course depends on the formula and percentage everything so but yes it's usually recommended to people who have a little bit more of a tougher skin and more towards mature skin types. Then there's the lactic acid, which is also very common. This one has a little bit of bigger molecule, so it is a bit more mild or it takes a little bit longer to see results than glycolic. Then there's also malic, tartaric, medelic, and citric. Yes, citric. So if you want to introduce an AAJ to your routine, I would say do the research to find out which one works best for your skin type and your skin issues. But my first recommendation is go for a product that only has one of the AAJs. There are several products out there that have a mix of different AAJs in it. But I would say if you're new to AAJs or if you're new to skincare overall, try to find a product that has only one of them and that that one AAJ is good for you. And if there's one thing, one single thing that I want you to take away from this video is to start off mild and slow. Chemical exfoliants are not, and I repeat, not an express train to glow. When you're starting to use AAJs, please restrain yourself. Please don't pick the harshest ones. I know it's this time of year and especially the circumstances that we live in right now, we're feeling extra like dull, just and pale, and we just want a quick fix, but don't use chemical exfoliants as a quick fix. 
If you really want a quick glow, I would say cake on a little bit of extra highlight and you're good to go. I've seen and I've heard about so many people who have seriously damaged their skin with a too harsh AHA and it's usually the people who are like, oh, you know, my skin is tough, it's not sensitive at all. News flash, that can change. Worst case scenario, you can sensitize your skin so much that it will never go back to what it usually was. The thing is, I don't want to scare you. Well, as long as you don't go out and buy the 30% AHA, the ordinary blood mask, the first thing you do, I'm happy. And at the end of this video, I will recommend a bunch of different gentle, nice start out products. So, so don't worry. Don't worry, I got you. The next question is, do I need it in my routine? Now, I would say, if you ask me, that it's not an essential in your routine, like for example, cleanser and an SPF is. But if you do experience either dullness, dryness, uneven skin tone, or fine lines, an AHA can definitely be a great addition to your routine. If you, on the other hand, have issues with congested skin or clogged pores in the forms of blackheads, whiteheads, or mild to moderate acne, BHA is your best friend. So go check out that episode um, in the series, episode one about BHA. Next question is how often should I use it? Now this is of course highly individual and depends on your skin type, how fast you want to see results, what AHA you're using, what the rest of your routine looks like. But as I mentioned above, definitely start slow. Do your research. There's a trillion of reviews on YouTube for every single different chemical exfoliant product. So you can see how other people are using them and introduce it into your routine that way. But I would absolutely say that the first time you get it, do a patch test. So put a little bit on your cheek, go to bed, wake up, see if there's a reaction. If there's no reaction, you're good to go. If you're introducing it to your routine, I would say try it maybe once a week and pay attention to your skin. When you're using it at night and when you wake up in the morning, is anything happening? Can you see any redness? Is there an irritation? Are there any breakouts? What's going on? If there's nothing, you're fine and you can probably do it more often than exactly how many times a week you should do it. Also very personal. I use an AHA mask once to twice a week and then I use BAJ once to twice a week. So anywhere in between two to four nights a week, I use some sort of a chemical exfoliant and then those other three to four nights, I let my skin rest. Next question is, where should I put it in my routine? So first of all, you definitely need to put it in your PM routine. You don't wanna put a chemical exfoliant in your AM routine because chemical exfoliants make your skin more sun sensitive. So if you use them in the morning and even though you put SPF on and you go outside, your skin is more sensitive towards the sun, there's always a bigger risk of you experiencing irritation, sunburn, or uh, even worse, pigmentation. So that's why you should always put your exfoliants in your PM routine always be on the safe side. As you have probably seen, there are exfoliants in all types of products, cleansers, toners, serums, moisturizers, and it can be very like difficult to navigate and know where to put it in your routine. Personally, I like to have a separate step. So after I cleanse, I do my exfoliants and then I do my hydrating products and then I do my moisturizer. That's just the way that I like it. I do have cleansers and night creams that have exfoliants in them, but I don't use those most of the times. I also like to use masks with exfoliants in them because then I wash it off and I just feel like I'm in total control. Usually I don't use leave-on products that have chemical exfoliants in them, but I'm thinking about maybe going back to that. I don't know yet. How long does it take until I see results? So unlike BAJs that take a while for you to see any results, AJs work very quickly, especially when it comes to like just resurfacing and giving you a glow. When it comes to fine lines and uneven skin tone, that of course takes a little bit longer. I would say that glycolic acid, which is the smallest molecule and the most efficient AHA, you can definitely see results overnight. It works really fast. Lactic acid works a little bit slower. Mandelic acid works even slower. So, but yeah, I would say a couple of days at least. Although remember that patience is key. You should look at your routine long-term. Next question is, how do I adjust the rest of my routine when I introduce an AHA? Um, if you have a very basic routine, if you're using a cleanser and an SPF in the morning and a cleanser and a moisturizing at night, you're good to go. If you, however, do have a retinoid in your PM routine, I would say an AHA isn't really necessary because the retinoid does that 
um, exfoliating effect as an AHA would do so I don't think that you need both so we choose either or next question is does it clash with any other ingredient now as far as the research I've done I couldn't find that it clashes with any other ingredient as far as like canceling each other out you know like niacinamide and vitamin C they say that if you put both of them in a aim routine they cancel each other out and none of them have an effect with AHAs, no, there's no ingredient like that. So the last question before my product recommendations is, are there any negative side effects or can there be any negative side effects with using an AHA? There can be. Um, there is a risk always that you over exfoliate your skin. That means that you exfoliate your skin too much, that you damage your skin barrier and that can lead to irritation, breakouts, uh, redness, just an angry skin. So I would say when you're introducing an AJ to your routine, just keep an extra eye on your skin or basically when you're um, introducing any sort of like very potent active ingredients such as AJ, BJ's, retinoids, keep an extra eye on your skin. I think we're very bad at talking about that point. Like when you apply it at night, when you wake up in the morning, just look a little bit extra, look a little bit closer on your skin. Is there anything that's going on? Just keep an extra eye out. So for my product recommendation, I like gentle products. So I don't like very harsh, high percentage masks. I like low percentages. And I'm also a very big fan of lactic acid in particular. It's a little bit gentler than glycolic. So my absolute favorite um, mask, peeling mask out of all times is the pixie peel and polish this one has as i said lactic acid in it it's only supposed to be on your skin for two to three minutes so it's a really good one when you're like a little bit in a hurry and you want just a little bit of a refreshment of your skin it has beads in it but i don't physically scrub my face with it i just apply it and then i wait two to three minutes and then i wash it off because i don't believe in physical exfoliation <clears throat> i have said that i am uh sensitive towards essential oils this actually has essential oils, but it's fine for me personally because I don't leave it on my skin for too long. So with wash of products, I'm fine with essential oils. If you do, however, want to try a leave-on product with lactic acid, The Ordinary has two great options. They have a lactic acid 5% and they have a lactic acid 10%. And I believe that it has a hyaluronic acid in it as well, so it's going to be very hydrating. Anyways, you know, try either or out of those two. I mean, 5 to 10% is still a quite low percentage of lactic acid so if you're very sensitive try the five percent if you're not as sensitive you can go ahead and try the ten percent out the thing about the, the ordinary products is that to me they're quite unpredictable like sometimes the products are great sometimes they're shit uh, but i have tried the lactic acid and that one is honestly a great product and it's affordable as well cruelty free no fragrance so to me it's just a jackpot as i said glycolic acid is the most common one so it's the one that we find most in products um there's the the ordinary glycolic acid seven percent i believe toner um, so if you want to check that out that's a great one that's kind of like a copy from the pixie glow tonic which has been around for years and it's been a cold product for years that one though i wouldn't recommend because it's 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 highly fragranced and it's a leave-on product so i wouldn't i just wouldn't there's also i'm gonna butcher this name the kale la la Luyaha from Crave Beauty. Um, it's glycolic acid 5.25%, I believe. It's also a toner. Um, that is a product that so many people rave about, so you can check that one out too. And then Paula's Choice also have a glycolic acid 8%. I believe it's like in a gel form. Um, and I think they also have a 5% one. If you're extremely sensitive and you're afraid of trying out AHAs, I would say go for mandelic acid instead. Um, By Wish Trend has a toner with 5% mandelic acid, and then The Ordinary also has a serum with 10% mand mandelic acid. All right, guys, that was it for my product recommendations. And also for this video, I hope you enjoy this. If you have a suggestion for the next topic, I haven't figured it out yet what I want to talk about. It doesn't have to be a specific ingredient. It could be anything else within skincare that is a little bit nerdy. It could be a product category like toners, serums, essences, creams, whatever. Let me know what you want to hear about and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.